So on switch one, show IP interface brief. The switch isn't configured with an IP address. So what I can do is say interface VLAN one, no shut. Now I could statically allocate an IP address to the switch or use DHCP. I'll simply use DHCP here. In the real world, you probably want to use static IP addresses rather than DHCP IP addresses. But you can see the switch has been allocated to this IP address. Show IP route. No gateway of last resort is set. ICMP cache is empty. That means we need to type IP default gateway and specify the default gateway, if I can spell that, as being the router. So now show IP route shows us that the switch has a default gateway of the router. So this switch should be able to ping google.com, which it can. So that's good. On switch two, I'll configure the IP address statically. So host switch two. At the moment, show IP interface brief shows us that no IP address is configured on the switch. So when we look at the routing table, nothing is displayed. So interface VLAN one, IP address 10.1, and in this case, it's in subnet 10.1.3. So I'll give it IP address two, and then I'll say IP default gateway 10.1.3.1, which is router two. So it should be able to ping the DNS server if everything is set up right. Doesn't look like it's working, but let's check our configuration. So show IP route, default gateway is configured as this. Show IP interface brief. I probably didn't know shut the interface and that's what's happened. Interface is administratively shut down. So interface VLAN one, no shut. Interface is now up. So can I ping 10131, which is router two? Yes, I can. Can I ping the DNS server? Yes, I can. And if we specify the name server being that DNS server, we should be able to ping cisco.com. In the real world, you may not want your switches to be able to ping that way, but here we simply want to prove that IP connectivity works. So can we ping switch one? Yes, we can. So as an example, if I try and telnet to that IP address, we're getting connection has been closed, we'd need to configure that switch for Telnet. What about switch three? So host name is switch three, show IP interface brief, no IP address configured on VLAN one. So again, show IP interface brief shows us that. So interface VLAN one, no shut, IP address 10.1.4.2 in this example. IP default gateway 10.1.4.1. So can we ping 10.1.3.2, which is switch two? Yes, we can, took it a bit of time, but that works. IP name server will be the DNS server. Can we ping cisco.com from the switch? Taking its time, let's try and ping the DNS server that looks good. You can see that it now works. Cisco.com has resolved, pings succeed. Can we ping switch one? Yes, we can. Can we trace to switch one? Yes, we can, so that works. So as an example, on switch one, if I configured the VTY lines, and an enable password to allow Telnet. So I've configured the VTY lines with login and a password of Cisco, and I've created an enable password. Switch three should be able to Telnet to switch one, which it can. So I'm happy with that. We've now set up this network with IP connectivity between the sites, we verified that PCs can ping each other. 
We've verified that switches can ping each other. We've verified that PCs can browse sites on the internet. I've done a little bit extra, but hopefully you've learnt one or two things as I've gone through the lab. So how did you do? Were you able to configure RIP version 2 in this network? Did you get it working? It's important that you know how to configure RIP, but it's also important that you know how RIP interacts with DHCP, static routes, default routes, and other protocols.